In Genesis 9 verse 25, after Ham had seen the nakedness of his father Noah, we read that Noah said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. And so the brother becomes a servant. But in Christ, this curse, as it were, is reversed. The servant can become a brother. And this is seen in the letter to Philemon. Onesimus was a slave who had fled from his master Philemon. But while he had been in Rome, he had been baptized into Christ. Paul tells Philemon that Onesimus would return to him, not now as a servant, but a brother servant, a brother beloved, especially to me, but how much more unto thee, both in the flesh and in the Lord. This is the opposite to the curse of Canaan. The servant has now become a brother. Are there any other links between the letter to Philemon and Noah? An important parallel can be seen by taking into account the imprisonment of the people in Noah's day to sin and death. Peter wrote, For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. By which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, which sometime were disobedient, when once the long-suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls, were saved by water. The phrase, spirits in prison, refers to the people in Noah's day, who, like all people since then and before, were imprisoned by sin and death. Noah preached the people, and in so doing, pointed forward to Christ. The theme of imprisonment and bondage is very strong in the letter to Philemon. Twice Paul refers to himself as a prisoner, and twice he mentions his bonds. He also refers to Epaphras as his fellow prisoner. That Paul was a prisoner of the Romans was typical of his imprisonment to sin and death, but he had the hope of being released from this prison at the return of Christ. In the meantime, he had become a brother in Christ, and even those who were slaves could also become his brother. In John 15 there is a similar reversal of the curse of Canaan, but here the servant becomes a friend. As Christ said, Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. In both John 15 and Philemon, the servant is transformed. In Philemon he becomes a brother, in John 15 he becomes a friend. There are several other links between John 15 and Philemon which relate to this transformation. The Greek for friend is phylos, and the name Philemon is derived from a related word. Christ says that his friends do whatever he commands. Paul knew that Philemon would show a similar spirit, not only doing what he requested, but more besides, as he said, knowing that thou wilt also do more than I say. Christ shows that a criterion of friendship is that a person confides with his friends. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my father I have made known unto you. Paul showed a similar spirit of friendship to Philemon, for he said, but without thy mind would I do nothing. John 15 also links back to Noah. Christ said that he is the vine and God is the husbandman. So when Noah became a husbandman and planted a vineyard, it should have pointed forward to Christ. But the type broke down because Noah became drunk. A key attribute of Noah was his obedience. Genesis 6 verse 22 says that according to all that God commanded him, so did he. And chapter 7 verse 5 says that Noah did accord unto all that Yahweh commanded him. This links with the Christ statement, Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. In this video we have seen that the conversion of Onesimus provides an example of the reverse of the curse of Canaan. For Canaan was a brother who became a servant, but Onesimus was a servant who became a brother and a friend.